Members, uh, Senator Hewitt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members. Uh, I'm excited to present to you Senate Bill 225, and it's great that we have a, a few children in the audience. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to start with a, with a two-minute video. This isn't a robot. It very well may have hydraulic arms, a drivetrain, and a circuit board. But this isn't a robot. This is a lesson in humility, hard work, and collaboration. This is a CrossFit workout for the muscle upstairs. This is an apple for the next generation of Newtons. It's a lot of things, but this isn't a robot. This is a roadmap that leads straight to engineering. This is a rock to shatter a thousand glass ceilings, a rope to pull a generation up and out of poverty, a sledgehammer to break down cultural barriers, and a universal language spoken in every nation on Earth. And because of that, this is a compass that can help point the way to peace. But please, don't think this is just a robot. This is Glastonbury for technology. This is mission control for the next moonshot. This is the Rosetta Stone to help translate the future. This is the sport that will help us win tomorrow. This is the software to program ourselves to cure cancer, build a clean engine, or step foot on Mars. But this isn't a robot. It's a machine to build the people who will change the world. That short video was narrated by a, by a seven-year-old, and it just it, it inspires me because it gives you an idea of all of the things that you can do when you have a population that's well educated in the area of STEM. Uh, we're going to actually have a robotics day at the Capitol where you'll see something very similar to what you saw there. It's going to be on May 25th at the Capitol Welcome Center. We'll have high school students, we'll have elementary and middle school students all showing you all the cool things that they've learned uh, in developing their robots and in competing. My vision for Louisiana is that we can become the state for industries in need of STEM talent. Just as certain industries go to Silicon Valley for talent, I want Louisiana to be the state where people come for talent in the area of STEM. We need a STEM activity pipeline where we can create an interest in STEM at the early ages. We can prepare students academically to be successful. We can graduate students with STEM degrees and with STEM certifications and then employ our citizens in high paying jobs. So why is this important to the state of Louisiana? Well, I would submit to you it, it's important for two reasons. You know, the first is that one of the best ways, I believe, to grow the state's economy is to put people to work in high paying jobs. The demand for STEM jobs in the next 10 years in Louisiana will grow by 18%. We need to increase the interest in STEM, especially for women. So when you build interest is in the elementary school, middle school, high school ages, while they're, while they're in school, K through 12. So I'd like to give you a couple of stats. I know this is a STEM bill, so you're gonna get a couple of statistics from me today, and then I'll tell you how the bill is gonna accomplish this. In Louisiana, the interest in STEM in males has increased from 41 to 47 percent in the last 10 years and is slightly above the national average. That's a great thing. However, the interest in STEM in females has decreased during that same time from 16 to 13 percent and is lower than the national average. Students need to be prepared to be successful in STEM. They call it readiness. So what are we doing as a state to prepare our students to be to excel in science and math and to be prepared to enter college with STEM type skills. So here's the statistic on that. 
52% of Louisiana students say that they have an interest in STEM, but only 14% of them are STEM ready based on ACT scores. Nationally, the numbers are like 48% have an interest and 26% are STEM ready, so we're way off the mark in Louisiana. Leading states, to show you how good the states are that do STEM really well, like Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire, have something much closer to 50% interest in STEM and 50% people are STEM ready. The Louisiana numbers, again, to go back, 52% of our students have an interest in STEM, but only 14% of them are considered to be STEM ready when they go to college. We need to graduate more students in STEM, especially women. The women graduates are extremely underrepresented in Louisiana in the areas of engineering, physics, and computer science, where the ratio of men to women graduates is roughly 80% men to 20% women in those areas. Women do excel in STEM areas in, in a few particular um, curriculums, environmental science, ag science, biological life sciences, and chemistry, where we actually have more women graduating in those areas than we do men. Of all of the college graduates in Louisiana, we have about 10% of women graduate with STEM careers, STEM degrees, and 33% men graduate with STEM degrees. So we can do better. What are other states doing? Seven governors this year in their state of the state address identified STEM as a major objective and they highlighted new programs focused on STEM, particularly in the area of computer science, which is an exploding area in our, in our country. So clearly there are states that are positioning themselves to compete for STEM because we all see the value in those high paying jobs and the opportunity that it creates for women to close the gender pay gap. So what does this bill do to get to the bill, Mr. Chairman? This bill basically creates a Louisiana STEM Advisory Council to be a focal point throughout our state for everything related to STEM. That group will be asked to coordinate and oversee the creation and delivery and promotion of STEM education programming. They'll be asked to increase student interest and achievement in STEM. They'll be asked to align education, economic development, workforce, and industry needs so that we're you know, connecting the dots all the way through the pipeline. And again, increase the number of women graduating in STEM careers. Secondly, what this bill does is it creates a diploma endorsement, a STEM diploma endorsement for high school students. So Bessie will be charged with describing or creating what the requirements are to achieve that and there will be like a gold seal on your diploma if you meet those special requirements for a STEM diploma endorsement. And it establishes the STEM Education Fund, which will allow us to accept private money, our public money subject to appropriation, of course, uh, that will allow us to um, accept, again, industry contributions to help us connect the dots, again, between education and industry. Uh, the, I do have a, a set of amendments that I'd like to introduce if I could at this time. Members, uh, Senator Hewitt does have, send up a set of am amendments. You have those amendments uh, distributed to you. Uh, they are uh, numbered 914. Uh, Senator Hewitt, you'd like to take a minute to explain Sir, the amendments? Most yeah. of these are um, really not significant changes. I will say, I'll point out a couple of them. Uh, in the bill, it describes the membership of the council. You know, as you would expect, it, it consists of educators, both from K through 12 and, and the uh, college level. It consists of industry representatives. What we have added in the amendments is uh, four additional representatives, LFT and LAE will have representation. Uh, we have representation from the private colleges, as well as the uh, Workforce Investment Council. So it's a pretty good balance on overall. We have 29 representatives overall. It is chaired by the Board of Regents, uh, Commissioner Rollo. The vice chairmanship rotates with the superintendent of education, uh, the workforce development, uh, the workforce commissioner, <clears throat> and economic development. 
Members, I'll offer those amendments for Senator Hewitt that set 914. Is there any objection to the adoption of the amendments? Without objection, those amendments are adopted. The vision for this group, Senator, is really the very first thing they're going to do is to create a comprehensive statewide STEM plan to kind of guide the development of of how do we want to deliver STEM and a vision of how do we want to do this in our state. And so part of what they're going to do is to collect up everything that's happening in our state. One of the things is they're going to be kind of the, um, the clearinghouse, for example, for best practices on STEM. The Board of Regents will house this best practices as well as educational instructional materials related to STEM for teachers so that again we're not all reinventing the wheel but we have sort of a go-to centralized place where we have a group of industry and educators that you know from the community that are saying where do we want to take this and it's it's going to be a road map again those those things don't really cost money those are going to be what are our, what's our plan and at some point if we get to a, a plan where there's a you know, suggestions in terms of curriculum changes or anything that could happen that could fall out of that. All the appropriate committees and what have you will be involved. There's representation from, again, K through 12 education and Bessie, you know, the, the university systems. There will be lots of representation and input from the experts to develop the plan and decide how we need to go forward. But I think the building of the plan and the work that is envisioned in the in the near term isn't going to cost us anything thank you senator hewitt thank you mr chairman most of what's going to be done in the in the in early stages will be research gathering best practices trying to figure out where we are what's our vision what are other states doing you know kind of pulling it all together because again what we have happening right now is kind of a shotgun approach and there's lots of great success stories out there but as you know when you kind of pull things together and you have more of a comprehensive plan we can make sure that we've got you know a pipeline where we're all working together and we're pulling the wagon in the same direction so I really do believe in the early stages and, and there's a report out that's the a requirement again to build metrics how are we going to measure our success and to report out to both the uh, Senate and Health Education Committees, I believe it's in January. So you all will get a report a year from now to say, this is what we've been working on, this is where we are, and give us some guidance or direction in terms of how we you know, continue to move forward. This is not a one-year study. That I'm envisioning this as being an entity that continues to grow as we figure out what direction we want to take this. The national statistics that show particularly like at the early ages, that, that girls do very well in math and science on the fourth grade testing, and then they don't do as well in the eighth grade testing. You know, they, 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 they beat the males in the fourth grade, and then their scores are below the males in the eighth grade. And so some of the presumptions is that, uh, you know, we kind of stereo, we have stereotypes about who should be good in math and science, and there's sort of this cool factor it's not cool to be smart or to be good in those areas if you're female there's some, a lot of um, statistics that show some of that so part of what we would in my way of thinking you would want to do is to help create a different culture mm -hmm. around STEM and it needs to be very engaging and it needs to be very hands-on and action-oriented similar to the the robotics thing that I showed you there's so much in that first robotics program I'm actually very familiar with it I started a first robotics team at our high school 10 years ago this program has been around for 20 years and there's probably lots of other good programs but I know a lot about this one and not only are you encouraging students that excel in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and things like that those were high school students that you all saw in that video but they're learning things about um, scheduling and planning there's there's room for people that are great with um, computer Origin science support who do not wish to speak and normally as you know when I have this many cards I don't read them however because of the people who are on this card who uh, are we out of red cards I mean we don't have any red <laughs> no, cards. No, we, we have quite a big stack uh, so here chairman <laughs>
I have no red cards. I have only green cards. So just for the for the people who are normally here, I want to read these cards. Scott Richard, Louisiana School Boards Association. Aaron Bendeley, Bessie, and the Louisiana Department of Education. Senator Wesley Bishop, District 4. Barry Irwin, Council for a Better Louisiana. Eva Kemp, Democrats for Education Reform. Gabrielle Keyes, CenturyLink. Cynthia Posey, Louisiana Federation of Teachers. Shane Riddle, Louisiana Association of Educators. Sarah Vandegrift, the Louisiana, uh, that's the uh, Charter Schools Association. Bridget Nyland, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. Barker Derman with BRAC. Michael Desitel with the Louisiana Association of Educators. Dr. Keith Leger with Stanford Children of Louisiana. Mary Ann Coleman with the Louisiana Independent Colleges and Universities. Rob Landry with Louisiana Chemical Association. Senator Hewitt, those cards are normally not all green. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently you have a very good bill, Senator Boudreau. I was going to say the same thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I said, when you bring a bill and you bring everybody together, we need more of those as we move education forward. But the stakeholders in this room realize the importance Again, of a great this bill where you can get all the stakeholders in this room um, to support it. And that, uh, with that, I'll move favorably with the amendments, Mr. Chair. Senator Hewitt, do you care to close? Well, I am, I'm excited and, and I want all of these supporters that are here in the room and, and others that might be listening to, uh, to get involved. It, it is, I think it's great for our future. I hope to all see you at the Robotics Day. It is going to be one of the coolest things to ever happen at the Capitol. And you're going to be so impressed with what young people can do. It's very humbling to be around them. And so um, I look forward to it. I'm very excited, and I appreciate all the support and, and the time of your committee, Mr. Chairman. Looking forward to that. Member Senator Boudreaux have moved favorable on Senate Bill 225 as amended. Without objection, Senate Bill 225 will be reported favorably as amended. Thank you, Senator Hewitt. Thank you, Chairman. Senator Thank you, members. Uh, Thank you, 